Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In this class, we discuss everything social science research from understanding the research discipline, research philosophy, the elements of scientific research, and the methodologies of conducting research. In research methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to our lesson today where we are going to discuss Likert scale. In our previous lesson, we have discussed the steps that are followed when designing a questionnaire. We have also designed a questionnaire using both open-ended and closed-ended questions. We have said that Likert scale is one of the methods that you can use to develop closed-ended questions. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to, one, explain the meaning of a Likert scale, two, identify the type of data collected using a Likert scale, three, state the guidelines that should be followed when constructing a Likert scale, and four, describe myths about Likert scale. Now, what are Likert scales? Likert scales are scales that, are, that collect quantitative data where people are asked to provide their level of agreement or disagreement with a given statement. Likert scale uses mostly a five-point scale where statements indicating a positive or negative attitude towards an object are stated and the respondents are required to mark their level of agreement or disagreement. So does a Likert scale collect categorical or continuous data? There has been a long studying dispute about the most valid way to analyze Likert data. And the method of analysis is based on whether the Likert collected categorical or continuous data. Please note that the data analysis decision for Likert's items should be made at the questionnaire development stage. So as you construct your Likert scale, ask yourself, how will I analyze this scale? So that as you construct, then you know whether you will be collecting categorical data or continuous data. If you have a series of questions that have Likert response options for your participants to answer, then analyze them as ordinal data. That means you use modes and frequencies. If you have a series of Likert type of questions that when combined, describe a variable, then analyze as interval data. In that case, you can use parametric tests, you can use mean and standard deviations as measures of central tendency and variability respectively to describe the scale. When a Likert scale is meant to collect continuous data, each statement is weighted with a value of one, two, three, four, five. And these weights or numbers are assigned to the responses with the direction determined by the agreement or disagreement of the item. For positive items, strongly agree is assigned a score of five, agree is assigned a score of four, neutral or undecided is assigned a score of three, disagree is assigned a score of two, 
and strongly disagree is assigned a score of 1. For negative items, the scale is reversed, where strongly agree is scored at 5, while strongly agree is scored at 1. Please note that when Likert scale is analyzed as categorical data, then these scores of 1 to 5 do not carry any quantitative value. They only carry a quantitative value when Likert scale will be analyzed as continuous data. What are the guidelines that we need to follow when we are developing scale questions or when we are developing Likert scale? Number one, use short, simple statements. Now, you do not need to tire your respondents by asking them statements that are so long such that the respondents will get tired. For instance, training content is adequate. That item is clear, it is simple, and the respondents can now respond whether they strongly agree or they disagree with that statement. Number two, avoid using factual statements. These are statements that are facts. For instance, training helps a community member acquire knowledge. Now, this is a question that the respondents does not need to think, but they only need to respond by ticking strongly agree because it is a fact. Training helps a community member acquire knowledge. Number three, avoid using double negatives. We discussed this at the questionnaires and we said avoid questions that respondents need to indicate whether they cannot or they should not do a particular activity. For instance, I usually do not value trainings as they are not helpful. Number four, try to have as many negatively oriented statements as they are the positively oriented statements. And that is why we are here said that when you construct a negative statement, you reverse the scale such that strongly disagree takes the score of five and strongly agree takes the score of one. So you ensure that your scale has combined both negative and positive statements. Number five, have at least a minimum of 10 statements in the scale. This is especially true when collecting continuous data from a Likert scale. Remember, for you to conduct inferential statistics or for you to analyze data using inferential statements, then you must have data that is adequate. And therefore, the statements that you put in the Likert scale should not be very few. They must be at least 10 and above. And again, do not make them very long you can have a maximum of about 20 to 25 statements. Number six, avoid statements that are irrelevant to the object under consideration. Always be guided by the research problem and the research questions that you seek to answer. Number seven, avoid statements that are likely to be endorsed by almost no one. That means the statements that you have put in or you have developed are either questions that are abstract and your respondents will not understand them and therefore they will skip it and leave the question blank. Keep the language of the statement simple, clear and direct. Nine, avoid double-barreled questions. And we said these are questions that test two variables. For instance, Training and community participation determines project success. Now, finally, we look at the myths about Likert scale. There are two writers who have identified 10 myths which are wrong about Likert scale. But we will concentrate on three 
that are especially made by undergraduate and postgraduate students. Number one, or myth number one, is that scale items are independent and autonomous with no underlying conceptual, logical, or empirical structure that brings them together and synthesizes them. Remember, scale items are geared towards answering a variable, and therefore, all of them are dependent on each other. And that is why you cannot treat a statement on its own because that statement is not independent and neither is it autonomous unless you are collecting categorical data. Myth number two is that recut scale items should be analyzed separately. This again is another myth. Now, remember, recut scale questions are part of a questionnaire. So they should be analyzed as you analyze your questionnaire. And secondly, the items should be analyzed together because they are all meant to address a variable. Number three is that little care, knowledge, insight, and understanding is needed to construct or use a Likert scale. Now, this is another myth where many students imagine that they only need to take their variables and convert it into a question uh, for it to be an item in a scale. This is a myth. You really need to re look at your research questions, the variables and indicators for you to construct Likert scale items. And with that, we have come to the end of this lesson. In this lesson, we have discussed Likert scale. We have explained the meaning of Likert scale, the guidelines that you follow when constructing Likert scale, and finally, the three myths that are about the Likert scale. Remember, we have said there are about 10, but we have only discussed three myths about Likert scale. In our next lesson, we are going to discuss interviews as the second method of collecting data. But before then, make sure you visit the researchmethodsclass.com website where you can watch the full research methods course. You can also access other courses on SPSS and m and &E consultancy. You are also able to book for consultation and you can also buy the research methods ebook. See you in our next lesson as we discuss interviews.